Okay, let's talk about ADE. So ADE, or antibody-dependent enhancement, is a process that was um, it's most closely associated with dengue fever. So let's read what this paper about dengue fever and ADE says. Dengue fever results from infection with any of the four dengue virus serotypes via the bite of an infected mosquito. And talk about the virus. And this, while dengue fever can manifest as an asymptomatic or mild febrile illness, a more severe form of the disease ensues during the secondary infection, whereby increased vascular permeability and thrombocytopenia causes gastrointestinal hemorrhage and plasma leakage that results in dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. During the secondary dengue infection by heterologous dengue virus serotype, antibody response in humans is primarily directed against the virus serotype from the previous infection, and the antibodies thus produced are often non-neutralizing against the heterologous serotype compared to the original infecting serotype from primary infection. This phenomenon is termed original antigenic sin, was first described in dengue by Halstead et al. These subneutralizing antibodies in turn aid in ADE of dengue infection by catalyzing virus entry via interactions with the FC receptor on the cell surface. Okay, what does this mean? Well, what this means is there's four types of dengue virus, and usually the first infection that people have to dengue virus is a very asymptomatic or very mild disease. But if you get infected a second time by a different dengue subtype, so there's four of them, what you get is um, the body has memory of the first dengue serotype and will ramp up um, antibody production to the first serotype, which is very similar to the second type. And what happens is you get a lot of antibodies that partially bind the new vir the second virus of the second infection, and it does not neutralize it because it's not the exact right antibody for it. And um, what that does is there's a there's a part of the virus, uh, so, excuse me, part of the antibody that is called the FC portion. So hmm, this is a really let's see if I can make this thing bigger. Okay, yeah. So this green thing is the antibody, and it looks like a little Y. The, the top part of the Y is the part that binds the virus, and the bottom part of the Y is called the FC portion. So, and the top part is called the FAB portion, or the FAB portion. The FC portion, there are little receptors that bind the FC portion on macrophages and um, some other uh, phagocytic cells, and what they do is the virus binds... Uh, the antibody binds the virus, and then the FC receptor binds the antibody and then takes this virus into the cell. So what you have is non-neutralizing antibodies that bind the second antibody, bring it into the cell, and now the cell can, uh, it can replicate easier inside this macrophage, and it takes over the macrophage, and it turns the macrophage into a factory for more viruses. So then you get... Um, you get a more severe disease in the second one. So this is obviously bad, and this has been one of the um, roadblocks to de developing an effective dengue virus vaccine because vaccines are essentially like simulating an infection, and so they will produce antibodies, and then if you produce the wrong type of antibodies to the actual infection, you may get this ADE, which results in more severe illness. So there was concern that this may happen with COVID, that you may get antibody-dependent enhancement in COVID. And there are a couple of uh, things that make people think that it might be possible. Um, so he here's their drawing about how it works. So again, you see the uh, little Y antibody, and here's the FC receptor. The FC receptor takes it into the macrophage, and the macrophage becomes a factory for making more viruses. And also, macrophages are an important part of your immune system, and it kind of shuts down the macrophage from doing a good job. And so this happens in dengue and this feline um, virus. This paper suggests that um, this is probably not the main way that it would work in COVID. In, in COVID, the way it would work is it would form large immune complexes, which would just um, drive complement cascade and inflammation in the lung and cause greater infl infection, uh, inflammation in the lung and greater symptoms. Um, so what is the evidence for ADE in vitro? So in vitro, they showed that when they tried to make... Um, so right here, let's read it. 
While AD has been well documented in vitro for a number of viruses, including HIV, Ebola, influenza, flavivirus, the relevance of in vitro AD for human coronavirus is less clear. So there is some evidence, but it's not very good. Um, several studies have shown increased uptake of SARS and MERS. So remember, there are seven coronaviruses that infect humans. Four cause the uh, common cold or are one of the many viruses that cause the common cold. And there, there's three viruses that cause pretty severe infections. They are SARS, MERS, and this one, SARS-CoV-2. Um, which, um, So several studies have shown uptake of SARS and MERS virions into FC receptor expressing monocytes and macrophages. So this is the same thing that happens in dengue. Uh, this paper found enhanced uptake of SARS and F spike expressing pseudoviruses into the monocyte-derived macrophages mediated by the FC receptor. And similarly, showed, he showed that neutralizing monoclonal antibodies against the receptor binding domain of MERS increased the uptake into the macrophages. However, the fact that, you know, so he's saying basically the studies in a lab have shown that if you have antibodies against MERS and SARS, they have increased uptake into macrophages. But that's not surprising because that's what macrophages are supposed to do. They're supposed to find things that antibodies have bound to and take them in process them, kill them, and, and figure out how to um, present them to T cells so that um, they, can, uh, they can fight them off. So in certain viruses like dengue, they, once the virus gets taken up by the macrophage, they can hijack the macrophage and turn it into a factory and also shut down the macrophage from doing its job. It does not seem that uh, coronaviruses can do this, so that may not be a huge deal. And then, no definitive role for AD in human coronavirus has been established. However, there were some concerns that showed that some people with higher antibody titers had worse disease, so they were wondering if that was going to be a problem. So this was a paper back in September before all the vaccine studies came out. There was a lot of concern about whether the vaccines would cause people to have ADE and, and make people have actually more severe disease rather than protecting them. The good news is, is the vaccine trials, which were done on 70,000 people, showed that it, it definitely did not do that. Um, there was no increase of severe disease. In fact, it was very protective against severe disease. Um, and so AD does not seem to be a big issue in coronaviruses. There is some question with the new variants. You know, maybe the, the vaccine or the previous infection it will give you neutralizing antibodies to the previous variant. And now with the new variants, it's going to be kind of like dengue where it's a different subtype and it won't be a very good match and may cause AD. But that doesn't seem like it's going to be a big problem because dengue is a macrophage specific, um, can, can replicate in macrophages, whereas coronavirus probably cannot. So it looks like the good news is, is that ADE is probably not going to be um, a big factor in covid but if you've um, read about ADE or heard about ADE and wondered what the deal was, um, that's basically the gist of it. It's, main, it it's, it's known to happen in several other viruses, dengue being the kind of prototypical virus for that. And it's a well-known phenomenon in those diseases. There was some concern that it may be the case in coronaviruses. But so far, um, it doesn't seem like that is going to be the case, uh, which is good news.